Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 39, full tick coming from the previous episode where we spoke about plotting. So FLTK, or pronounced full tick, is a very minimalistic graphical user interface library that runs cross-platform on Windows, X11, so Linux and unix operating systems, macOS and on top of OpenGL, plus uh, even more things. There is uh, examples that run on Android even. It really is minimalistic and has a very old style look because it is very old. But the advantage is that it is licensed uh, with the LGPL with an exemption so that you can compile it statically into your application. For Python, there is the Pi Fultic uh, wrapper. And uh, for Rust, there is a crate called FLTK RS. And uh, the developer is very, very active, also has a YouTube channel. So you might want to check out the channel of Mohammed Al Yusuf. I hope I didn't butcher your name too badly. And he also has a cool video where he would show you how to run a full tick application on Android that is compiled with Rust. So that's pretty cool. So now for our quick uh, source code comparison, we jump over to the code. As usual, on the left, we have our Python code. So we would import the FLTK and, well, it kind of makes sense to import everything because the namespace holds all the things that you need to set up widgets and buttons and stuff like that. The application is a minimal example that would increase a counter and shows you how to open a file browsing a dialog and also avoids the default behavior where the escape key would quit your application. So for the counter, we set up a global variable in Python where the counter is starting with the zero. And uh, in order to create a new widget for our adder to this uh, counter, we derive our class from FL widget, create our own that we call adder. And in the constructor, we will then set up packing and uh, this allows for us to automatically for example horizontally or vertically align elements in the window then we uh, create um, buttons to add and one subtract button once we have that we can end the container and tell it to distribute those buttons horizontally and here we can give the position and its uh, dimensions then we do a second time again, we create yet another container. This time it is for our file open button. We create the file open button and the container ends as well. What you can see here is that there are callbacks defined. They are pointing into this same class as well. So for add one, what we do is we use the global counter variable. We add one to it and then we update the display frame that holds the text. The display frame is not yet uh, given, it is set up in the main application. So add two will not shock us, it's the same code, but we add the uh, value of uh, two to the counter. If we now continue further down in the code, we can see then of course the subtract uh, three will uh, do exactly that. And for open file, we will use the FL file chooser, give it the starting location, which pattern it should look for. Then we will only select a single file. We will have it show. And now in Python, this is fairly annoying because what you have to do is you have to wait all the time. This file chooser is still visible and tell the event handler of the full tick to wait until this is finished. This way it actually stays visible to the end user and they can interact with it. So once uh, this was done, so the user, for example, pressed cancel or okay, we can now fetch the file name that was coming out of the file chooser with uh, this code. In order to avoid the escape key quitting the application, what uh, we have to do in Python is derive from the FL window widget create our own window class. So we call, I call it the no escape window. We will simply use the constructor and call the default constructor. 
and once this is done we can implement the, the handle method where we get passed an event we can uh, compare this event to it being a shortcut if it is a shortcut and the key pressed is the escape key all we have to do is return a non-zero value meaning that we have handled the event and the event handler will not bubble the event up to other um, elements because it considers it handled the reason i chose to do that is normally people are not expecting for the whole application to quit when you press escape and it uh, shows how you can override predefined shortcuts and how the event handling works for key presses inside full tick. Now in the main code what we do is we set up our no escape window, we set up our other user interface elements and after that we create the display frame which is simply a box at a certain position that holds the text uh, zero and this display frame is exactly the one that up here gets a new label with the string representation of uh, the counter. Then uh, once we did all of this we can end the window setup code and we can show it and then the full tick event system can start to run and therefore show the graphic user interface. Now Rust is not uh, too much different on the right, we are importing the necessary things from the full tick uh, crate. So the main application buttons, we will use events and uh, key presses. Then we are using pack and the enum uh, pack type to give away if we want it, in our case, for example, horizontally packed. Then uh, prelude is uh, the standard import that you want to use. And we are using a window. A big advantage of Rust is the enum data type because with the match statement you can make sure at compile time that you have implemented all enum variants and in order to handle this in a cool way using a actually C implemented library full tick we will use the try from primitive macro from the num enum crate and the try from trait here we already have the code right we are setting up an enum for our events and uh, we will have events adding one, adding two, subtract three and open file. We have to define a value here for the first one because event, events with the number 30 and lower are reserved within a full tick. Here I chose 41 to be extra sure outside of this range. The classic uh, derives debug equality and here in our macro for the try from a primitive implementation, we represent also in the same way that full tick does it, so it's an i32. And with this, we can make sure at compile time that all of these events are handled correctly. Now we are here at the code that will be very similar to what we did in Python. We have our struct adder, we implement adder, and in the constructor of it, we actually do the packing. If we compare this with the Python code, you can see that it's very similar. We have the FL pack here, it is just called a pack, and the button is a FL button. So these are mapping. The big difference that you can see in the Rust code to the Python code is here we have to specify a function pointer, and in Rust we get to directly write our closure within the set callback call. All we have to do here is call our main event handler with the event add one. And uh, since this handle main only accepts i32s, we convert the enum into an i32. Same thing is now for add two sub uh, three, that's nothing special. And we end the container that we started here with the packing. And we use the pack type horizontal to get our horizontal packing. So this is the equivalent to the left side. Same thing, second container and another button to open the file. And now we send off the open file event, of course. We close the container and also use horizontal packing. Further down, we now create our uh, my window. Contrary to the Python code where we just use a global variable, we will have to share the resource of the counter with the different event handlers. So therefore, we set up a reference counted ref cell that holds the value zero. 
then we create the window and uh, frame, which is uh, very similar to our main code in Python. We also construct our adder instance. And here we get to handle the events that are going to this display frame. This closure gets handed over a widget and the event. What we can now do is use the event bits, so the number representation of the event. And we try to convert it back into the enum. So we use custom events uh, try from. This gives us a result. So if it's OK, we will try to handle the event. If it is an error, for example, the event code is outside of our enum range. So one of the internal events, this will likely be one of those cases. We can return false, indicating that the event bubbling should continue. If all of this works out OK, we actually get our custom event. Then we can match this custom event to our variants of the enum. So in the case of add1, add2 and sub3, we get to set the label with the current counter's uh, value converted to string. If the event is open file, we return a true, but we don't have to update the label because we haven't changed the counter. Then we can uh, end the window setup and uh, show it. Below, we now handle the events that go to the whole window, not just to the frame. Looking at this handler, we also get the widget passed, but we don't really use it in this case. We only check the event. Now, in order to avoid the escape key doing the default application quit, here we do the same thing we did in Python. If the event is of type uh, shortcut, and if the key pressed is the escape key, we actually let the user know on the console what uh, we did. We're ignoring the escape window close and return true to let the system know that we handled this event. And now for doing a math, we are having the custom events try from event uh, bits as we had up there in the handler for the frame. Same thing, if OK, if error. And if OK, we also match all the options. In this case, now we have add1, add1, add2, add2, sub3, plus the minus 3. And open file actually opens the dialog. Here we do not have to wait because the implementation of FL of full tick RS is already doing all the necessary work for us. The order of arguments is different, however, so we get to use uh, the title then the search pattern, then the directory where it should look, and that we only want to have one file. Here we can then show this file. Once this is done, we can return, since this is the constructor of my window, remember, we can return the my window instance, which doesn't have any members, so it is the empty curly braces. Uh, down to the main code. There's not too much magic going on anymore. We have our default application that we instantiate. We create the window that we, uh, whose code we just went over. Here we can uh, debug if our add one, two, and three will actually give us the correct integer representations. And then all we have to do is run our application and we unwrap. Because if this doesn't work, then we have a major problem. We don't have to do error managing in this case. That concludes the Rust code. Let's run also the Rust version for it. So we will use cargo run. Here we are running the application. You can see the title, title of the frame, the other widget, title of the open file widget. Here is the zero for the counter. And of course the respective labels of the buttons. If we now uh, click the button, we add a 1, we add a 2, we subtract a 3, and we can open a file, and you can see that it actually respects the star.rs uh, file pattern, and this worked fine. This concludes this very minimal example of uh, full tick. You can uh, customize all of uh, its uh, looks, like the color and the shape of the buttons, the uh, text as well. This way you can make much nicer looking user interfaces.
and so far at least it's uh, the only actually usable and working cross-platform UI library on Rust. I hope uh, there will be uh, more developments in uh, this direction, but uh, so far this is literally the only area where I haven't uh, found anything. All the other backend uh, code has uh, existing crates and already a vibrant community. And as I said, the developer of this Baltic crate is very, very active and has a lot of example code and uh, cool videos that will show you how it works. So if you need to write some cross-platform user interface, this is an easy way to go. Thanks uh, for watching. Coming up next at the From Python to Rust series will be how you can rustify your uh, Python code, meaning that what you've learned using Rust influences in how you write your Python code.